Welcome to Super Movie Brothers. Let's start the show. This is a podcast on the Podfix Network. You can check out more shows like it at podfixnetwork.com. Super Movie Brothers premium review of Thor Ragnarok and fuck I, I, I'm I not tired of Immigrant Song not yet no not one bit my god <laughs> it gets me hyped it does and uh, I, I it's not a spoiler Wait, who, say, who are you again I'm sorry have we met oh yeah that's what I'm saying <laughs> the, the song comes in 30 seconds into the movie I know. like it gets started and I was like I, that, that's that's not that, that's not a bad thing <laughs> <laughs> it fits the marketing well uh and it, and it, it was just it was, it was a lot of fun the movie starts out so much fun uh but let's 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 get through our intros before we start talking about the film so i am your host super movie brother dave i'm your host super movie brother jay <laughs> so uh, we're gonna get into our review of thor ragnarok mm-hmm. uh, me and jay did not see it together even though we were in the same place at the same the time, same time. <laughs> Uh, I actually saw it in the theaters that I hated. I know, and I, I had surprised. a better experience this time. We saw it in the in the Dolby Digital Theater, mm-hmm. and the vibrations in, of the seat were nowhere near the level they were for mm-hmm. Blade Runner. I'm just taking it as Blade Runner was just a one off. I actually really enjoyed the Dolby Theater, man, especially for a beautiful, bright, colorful film like right, this. Right. Uh, it fit so well. The screen was so crisp, yeah, so clear. I, I could see that, dude. It was. You didn't need to see it in 3D if you're watching. So now you understand Dolby why Digital. I did enjoy War of the Planet of the Apes in the yeah. Dolby, and then so, seeing it in Blade Runner, it was a completely different format. So clear, yeah. I mean, it just didn't work for Blade Runner, I think, yeah. because of because of the noir tones of that movie. Where and whatever, you kind of want it a little darker. Whoever did the sound design, I guess, chose to add that bass. Right. Every know. time the music's bass would drop, our seats would shake. Not so much with this, but. Every time Thor, uh, every time Hulk took a step, yeah, not not too many bass lines in, in uh, Thor. No, but it was <laughs> it, it was an enjoyable experience in those seats. The seats are comfortable as hell, and the screen is just crystal. How did Lauren like clear. it? Uh, she didn't really have any comments about like the about the quality. She really doesn't okay. care, man. Like she'll watch it, it mm. as long as it's better than bootleg quality. She's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly better than VHS. She's, she's kind of like me. Yeah, she's okay. Uh, but no, I I enjoyed my experience in there. The the tickets are a little expensive. So about I mean, five dollars more, maybe right? ten. It's twenty dollars a ticket to get into those theaters. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the only reason we went there is because it was sold out everywhere else. Um, so, and we 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 like to choose our own seats when we buy on Fandango. We That's don't like to roll the dice because mine was not sold out. Well, because yours was first come first serve seating, right? I don't, oh, you guys don't like that. That's me right. and Lauren don't like That's that right. because 
we get like the way we go see movies when we see them on Thursday nights, it's at seven o'clock. We both get home from work at like six o'clock. So like we have like a very narrow sure. a timeline. Yeah. yeah. So like if we're going to be late, we want to at least know that the seats we want are there. If we get there and we, and we're, we're fighting for seats with everybody, especially on opening night, we run the risk of cranging our necks all night, which I actually don't mind. Cause I feel like in the front rows, you're really immersed. It's not that bad in anymore. The, like back in the day, it was right. really bad, but right. now with the reclining for some seats, other, it's not bad with the reclining seats and i think whatever picture quality that they're using nowadays it doesn't affect your eyes as as poorly as it did before exactly but um other than that my viewing experience no it was i I enjoyed it i enjoyed seeing the adobe digital theater so yeah i mean this movie like right off the bat um what did you think about them opening up with Thor in the cage, just like talking and just like throwing like little 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 gags and little jokes every? It's definitely just setting up the tone of the movie. I know, but like for some odd reason, I still it still doesn't quite open right to me. Like I have very minor gripes about this movie overall. Um, I really thoroughly enjoyed it, but. I didn't care for that opening so much because. So it reminded me of a lot of like. Um, it was hard to hear him. It you know reminded what I'm me a lot of like. And understand everything. Superman saying. Returns, the the Brian Singer Superman. Mm. When he kind of just like comes back and you're like, where's he been? Oh, he was out in space. It's they kind of do the same thing with Thor, yeah. where they're like, what's he doing? Oh, he's been out in space. He's been learning about you know. Yeah, saving Asgard from Ragnarok and looking for the Infinity Gems. He found none of them. <laughs> he didn't find any. Uh, so, I mean, but uh, that's we don't want to get too big into spoilers because we'll do our spoiler section at the end. Yeah. So it, it did kind and of I, feel a little. I, I know a I little mean, jarring. It, it, it wasn't. It just, wasn't so much what he was saying and the jokes and everything like that. It was just that it, it hit you over the face with it right off the bat. And I think a lot of people and me included, because I actually saw this twice over the weekend, not just once. And the first time I I, it, I had to like catch up for Look a second. You're like, going Whoa. to the theater to see a Marvel movie twice. I know. <laughs> How about that? And enjoying it both times equally. It took a little bit for me to like really hear and understand what he was saying. I don't know if it's his Australian accent kind of thing, or no. if it's like because I can't see his face so much because it like it was really dark. Um, I don't know what it was, but for some reason, I guess I got to say it's the it sound in me, the theater. It could have been. It, it could have been like it took me a second to like pick up on their dialogue. Like, I understood like everything the, that was being said. Yeah. the whole time. So, um, but after, that or the fact but, that you're deaf in one ear. Right. Well, but after that, <laughs> you I'm don't get to you. review sound quality of film, Jay, because already you're flawed. <laughs> you're deaf in one ear, motherfucker. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's so true. My Why God. we even bother? Why would giving... I ever spend three hundred dollars for Beats headphones? Is beyond me. I have no idea. Yeah, because you're only using half of them. <laughs> <laughs> Can you cut them in half? Give me the other half. <laughs> uh, um, so, but otherwise, the rest of the movie, ninety-five percent of the comedy and the dialogue and the jokes worked for me very well. Yeah, I, I, I think honestly, what and what, I thought fit the movie and the characters. What really brought well, so. you through this film, the whole way through, was the comedy moments. It wasn't character moments. It, it like none of it was really character moments. You were you you were drawn through this film, waiting for your next punchline and your next punch to be thrown, and that's it. There wasn't a deep story here. Um, Thor, no. they didn't get deep into Thor's character. They attempted to several times. However, um, it just it it just didn't feel a little bit more about his father, right? But it didn't feel his home. It didn't feel authentic to me. Um, to be honest, I, I don't think they've ever really nailed down Thor's character. Um, he he's he's acted different in Thor one right. to Thor two to now Thor three and in the Avengers films, That's you know very true. he he bounces back and forth between you know a a solemn character who who bears the weight of his entire people on his shoulders, and then two seconds later he's turning around cracking a joke and yeah. it's just no, it's true. The only thing that I say it's in service of the characters all this joke is that it shows the petulant child childlikeness of him. Yeah. So and I think he definitely does still have a good chunk of that, um, just like Loki. I mean, Loki, he knows who he is. He's the same type of version, but just a bad guy version, you know. But Thor has that sense of pride and, like, uh, duty and being a hero. And he just kind of, like, he even says it in the movies. You know, he's like a ladies' man, uh, but I'm respectful for them. And, you know, like, <laughs> I like him a little too much sometimes, but, you know, not in a creepy way. He's like, you know, he's <laughs> yeah. kind of going on a funny little rant about that. But So what did you think of Loki since you mentioned him? 
He definitely was not the spotlight in this one, as no. he's been in other Thor films. And it was all for mostly comedic effect and um, to enhance Thor's story or character arc and and not it a was big, just it was just like not a big payoff for for how we left yeah. loki but, at the end of thor 2 but for overall though like him as as a, a comedic sidekick to thor can you even say that but he kind of was right no yeah it's 100 percent what he was it, it worked I he mean, was it he was thor's me. punchline yeah. and thor was another he was the hulk's punchline yeah. like i mean they they all just they all just riffed on each other the entire time. I mean, uh, and that's th- th- that definitely comes from the direction. That definitely comes from director uh, yeah. Taika Waititi, uh, yeah. who did a film that that you you've talked about before. Uh, what we do in the shadows. Um, I mentioned. Okay. Well, and I will be talking about it possibly in Jay's Indie Corner. Okay, so there's there's that, and then there's um you know the the other movie that he did that I really enjoy, which is Hunt for the Wilder People. I that, I've yet to see that is that that might be a homework assignment for you Ooh. in an upcoming episode of the regular of the uh, of Super Movie Brothers. So uh, I absolutely love that movie with Sam Neill and Sam Neill gets a cameo in this. Right. But you definitely see that humor in those films and you see it translating here into these. And even a lot of the characters that showed up in those films, a lot of the, the people are cameos in this as well. So mm-hmm. he, he definitely keeps that that cast you know with him. Uh, but I think I think you know his sensibility and his humor goes a long way in this film. I I think Marvel had to. He saved this property to be. Well, honest. it doesn't. Say, I think I think I think it's safe to say that for everyone who is complaining about the jokey nature of this film, there was no other way to do this. I I really I don't, don't think there was there, any other is way there to really do. Is there really going to be that many people complaining about that? There's a, I've heard a few. Yeah, I've heard a few complain okay. that they're they're mixed because of because of the mixed the, the mixed emotional messages of the film and stuff like that. Where okay. Thor is going. From from loathing and lamenting one second, and you know, cracking jokes the next, and you know, you have a character like Korg showing up in some sure. scenes that are that that's really breaking up a, what could be a pretty emotional moment. Um, but I think I, I think that's just not the type of movie you're going for with the Thor films. And where, I think a lot of people, our, our listeners, would actually be surprised that I'm actually on board and, and enjoying this kind of movie because this is not my normal kind of movie. And I, I agree. But however, for better or worse, for the better this time, um, Taika Waititi, I guess his sense of humor really works for me because it, it worked for me in this movie. And I think it worked for this kind of type of movie. And if I think you liked it, what it, we do in the shadows, then you're gonna, you know, if if, if that's something that you enjoyed, yeah. then you're gonna enjoy his humor. If if you know, if you like Hunt for the Wilder People, when when you watch that, you you're gonna enjoy this this movie. I yeah. mean, you're just it's it's so that type I, of comedic sensibility the, exactly. that he brings to it. And I went for the ride with it because it it, it 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 was what it was. Um, I was not taking it, you know, some kind of like civil war type of like. No. Um, you know, level of like trying to take yeah. it serious. You Winter know? Soldier, this is not. <laughs> this is yeah. This is not Winter Soldier. This, this is, this is not, a completely different kind of movie. Um, and it's not even Guardians of the Galaxy either, because Guardians of the Galaxy did, especially the first one, more so than the second one, did a great job of balancing its emotional moments with its comedic moments. Um, this, however, it didn't care for its emotional moments. And it didn't it really, really need to because this is the third one. You right. have to keep that in mind, you know. So we do know these characters, and we do get introduced with a lot of new characters as well. Right. Um, some interesting females, and you know, again with the female. Um, hello. So we talked about Thor and how you know his 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 dual nature in the film is is a little jaunting at times. Loki really just was kind of there as a side character. He really didn't get the shine like he did in Thor 1 and Thor 2 or or the Avengers. Mm. Um cuz Loki is the only reason to watch Thor 2 ever. Like not even you don't even want to watch it for Thor. I mean Loki is the really the only good part of that movie. Uh Tom Hiddleston. Uh and now we got we're to the villain. So Jay, what would you think of Hela? Uh, oh, I you know, I uh, I expected a little bit more of, um, I'm not exactly sure what, but I was expecting a little bit more. A little bit better than Kate Blanchett as the, uh, as, as Stalin's fair haired girl in, yeah, <laughs> in you know, she, had one, she had one big epic fight scene um, to show how ruthless and pretty much indestructible she is essentially um nobody can defeat her i think your intro to her showed her how ruthless and indestructible she is yes very much so and um 
but I don't know, like the dialogue and just like her. You didn't spend a lot of time with the character. And, you and didn't the, get a lot of ideas for her motivations. And at the very end, they allude um, to her past um, and and her past interactions with Asgardians and what her role was with them. They allude to that stuff, but you're never shown it. You're, you're I mean, you're shown it that, in the tapestries. And they, and they do it in a, in a boring exposition. Right. They scene. did it a lot, like they did in Guardians of the Galaxy, where it's it's written in tapestries on the wall. Right, and there's like you know. Honestly, and I, I, it's rare that I say this, I probably would have done better with some flashbacks. And maybe those flashbacks would have been a reason for you to to get more out of Sir Anthony Hopkins. Because mm. he was in this very minimally. I think he signed on specifically for the beginning of the movie. Right. Where he gets to have a little fun. Um, <laughs> we won't spoil that. But no. But, but what I'm saying is you might have actually had a little bit more from your villain character if we got to see her in her previous role. Um, and we got to see the turn a little bit. Now that would have made for a little bit longer of a runtime, but this had a fairly short runtime. Yeah. I might not have disliked that. Too I mean, much. she looked good. I, I looked liked great. her. I liked her outfit, her costume, and everything like that. Um, she looked it's, uncomfortable it's, as fuck. But I mean, right? But <laughs> it was just. It just. It just didn't quite work um, to the level that I expected, and I think they could have gone. Um, however, at the same time, it's, I guess, overall one of the better Marvel villains, you know, I mean, there's not that many great ones out there, so, no. you know, um, but it's probably one of the better ones and it makes it a little bit more interesting because, you know, it's a female, yeah. you know, and it's, it's, it's a little different and she is just balls to the wall. That's never brought the up. goddess it's, of death. It's never brought you know? up. It's never brought up that she's a woman. You just assume that she's powerful. It's never even addressed that oh, she's well, a sure. woman that's this powerful. It's just oh, yeah. and, she and just is. It really doesn't <laughs> even make a difference. I mean, it has nothing to do with anything, but being the goddess of death. And then we have our, our side characters. Uh, you know, we Obviously, we have the Hulk, who is major in the marketing. Uh, most of the story is taken from, from a I Hulk storyline, yeah. at, least, at least the planet of Sakaar and, and the gladiator battles on it. Uh, are taken from a Hulk comic book. Uh, we also have Korg, the the rock creature, um, who is voiced by Taika Waititi. I know. Um, and then you know we have some some other characters, Valkyrie, um, and then we we do get she played a big part though. We do get Thor's Warriors three, um, and we'll talk about them a little bit more in spoiler territory. But really, I think I think the supporting cast was was mostly pretty weak, with the exception of Thor, with the exception of Hulk and Valkyrie. I think Hulk and Valkyrie were really. I mean, it really was. Well, you, you throw in Carl Urban in the stupid role, Scourge. Yeah, uh, very I mean, much the similar to his character in the comics. Um, yeah, I didn't really understand. When you really think about it, his character didn't need to be in the movie at all. No, no. I mean, when I was sitting there, I thought it made sense. I was like, oh, maybe he's like. I kept thinking like maybe he's like Loki's like little lackey. Like that would make sense. You know, if they established him as a lackey to one villain, a stronger villain shows up, he becomes Something, a lackey to that right? villain. Something. Yeah, they really didn't give us a whole lot of him. Uh and then later on when we talk about him in spoilers, uh they, they get into a whole get into a whole emotional thing with him that just it doesn't really have a payoff for you because you didn't care for the character to begin with. So no. why do you care about his emotional turn uh, in 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 the third act or anything like that? But yeah, it was it was a bit of a mess. But I think ultimately, you know, when you put everything together, uh, it's just the, the film is a a tight runtime and it's it packs a lot of fun into its runtime. It packs some decent action, not great action. It packs some decent action. Um, the th- the the fight between well, that, Thor and the Hulk, honestly, it it kind of cheats you a little bit because let's face it, it does right. We haven't seen these. There's two, a lot of dialogue in that fight scene. Huh? We haven't seen these two on screen together since 2015. We got a bit of a preview of their fight in 2012. Mm. So it's been since 2012 since we've waited to find out who's the strongest Avenger, which one will win, who could beat who, the god or the monster. Yeah, and we don't we don't really get to know. It was it was still kind of fun, it's kind though. of unfortunate. But it was I, I still kind of wanted to see a little bit more, and you know, regardless, I really loved their banter back and oh, forth. Oh, their banter was great. I mean, that was one of the best parts. And of, of the course, movie. in this film, probably more so than any other other one, which is kind of strange, we get a duality of the Hulk, um, mm. more so than any other one, where 
You know, the Way Hulk, more. the Hulk is a different being than Banner. I mean, they mention it in the other films, but it, this film actually showed you that. And this is the closest we're probably ever going to get to a solo Hulk, Hulk film. I mean, that's just... I think so. That's just it. I mean, because Universal still holds distribution rights for a for a single Hulk yeah. movie. So. And, and they did a great job with it. So, Jay, uh, you ready to score this thing before we get into spoilers? Uh, yeah, I am. Um, this is one of those movies where, yes, there were things to nitpick at, and there are things that you can just kind of critique, but I kind of chose to not do that um, in some ways, you know, and just really just kind of look at it as what it is. It's just going to be a fun Marvel movie and be a good time. But despite that, you know, there were overall elements of the movie that could have been a lot better, but it's still a fun fucking movie, and I give it an A-. minus. I'm actually going to be coming in a little bit lower than you on this one. Okay. I'm going to be giving it a B minus. Well, honestly, okay. I had I had a whole lot of yucks. I didn't expect with it. that low. <laughs> I, I laughed my ass off at a lot of moments in the film, but when I when I went back to it and I thought about the story and I thought about the characters, I realized all the film was was a barrel of laughs. It was it was a lot of fun, but when you take it away, this wasn't a a straight comedy. There was a story to tell there, and the story kind of got lost a little bit, and the characters got lost in it. And I don't think they took enough time to really develop any one character. We don't know what Thor really has been up to since 2015. We 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 get a brief you know history of what the Hulk's been up to since 2015, but really we're just kind of dropped in with these characters again, and we pick them up where they were and it, it it kind of feels like by the end there's no emotional payoff for for anybody it's not like you know anyone made a great strides there was well, one character yeah, like the movie and there was much. one person in the film that i thought had carried the heart of the film and it wasn't thor and it was it was probably one of the characters that had the least amount of screen time it was idris alba's hemi doll mm. He was actually the heart of the film, <laughs> if you think about it. it no, I know. I I, <laughs> I, I, I agree. And um, it, it was one of those things He did where, far better in this than he know, did as Roland DeShane. The, the, this whole movie pretty much, what, lasted three or four days? Yeah. Essentially, you know? So, um, so we, between your... But I, I think that's part of the problem. Like, I went into it knowing that what it was going to be. And, like, I kind of accepted the fact that, like, just enjoy the ride because i was worried that i was not going to I wasn't like it thinking, i wasn't thinking uh, anything negative about it coming into it i was just thinking that i didn't, didn't read anything going into it i just knew that it was you know i, I just thought about what right. i had just watched and i thought about everything that i really enjoyed about no, it i I, I, res- I respect your grade I everything mean, I, I enjoyed no, about it was the comedy every, had everything that do. you yeah everything that, everything that you said it, it, i i completely understand and um you know, I think I think there was some some our, our grades are just gonna be a little bit different. That's yeah, all. Some things were done to a disservice. No, that's all. Disservice to characters and disservice of the story. Uh, but by our powers combined, Jay, your A minus and my B minus, we wind up with a B plus. So fine with me. It's not it's not terrible. Yeah. So let's get into our spoilers and Easter eggs. Roll that spoiler sound. Spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. Spoiler warning. All right, Jay, you alluded to it before. Uh, Hela is, in this film, is Thor and Loki's older sister. She's the firstborn of Odin. Who he tries to cover up. Right. You know, Therefore, uh, she lays history. claim to the throne. And the reason that she was hidden was because Odin wasn't always such a benevolent leader. He mm. actually, uh, he, he did not gain rule over the nine realms in such a peaceful fashion he did it all through blood and warfare and she was the main you know the the main bringer of death yeah, for spearhead of the- for 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 odin um and once you know he had won and and he had expanded you know that you know there's the old saying uh caesar looked uh, at all at all of his lands and realized there was no there was nowhere left in the world to conquer and he weeped mm. kind of like that's kind of like what odin did he looked around and went F- there's nothing else right i think I, so i own it all i mean other than the far reaches of space and the, I don't, who cares about that i don't think right? i don't think they had the technology or the or the means to to travel that far so he said forget it everywhere i can reach i've i've done so mm-hmm. Uh, the wars were done. He he needed to make peace with the new people, and the his 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 child, his villain, he had he had no use for any longer. She she had outgrown him. She she was pow- more powerful than him. So 
right? All he could do was lock her away. And then, of course, we get the death of Odin in the very beginning of the film, and we find out that he was the lock on her door. Once he dies, her door is open, which I thought was kind of selfish of him. <laughs> when he's like, I'm going to go now. I'm going to die. Bye, boys. I love you. Essentially, that's what he did. And he just fucking right? Obi-Wan like, like fades into the force and disappears. Yeah. And then almost immediately, like right on cue, she comes stepping out of a portal and yeah. she's like, hello, boys. Yeah. <laughs> but we do get her the, the immense strength of her right away when she destroys Thor's hammer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which, right off the bat, it's like whoa. Okay. Which they they do allude to throughout the film that that's kind of like destroying Thor's dick. <laughs> he, it's, I mean, it is such an extension much. of himself. <laughs> uh, I loved when Thor, you know, gets back to Asgard and he immediately susses out that you're not. Come on, you're not Odin. You're you're Loki. But what I really enjoyed was the play because because Matt Damon, oh boy, is playing Loki. Uh, Chris Helmsworth, Chris Helmsworth's brother, not yeah, Liam, Luke brother. Helmsworth is playing Thor. He's 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 a much smaller actor than his two brothers, but I honestly think he's a better actor than Liam. Sam Neill is also playing Odin, which I thought was pretty funny because Hunt for the Wilder People. You know, he's fitting his people, oh, yeah. he's fitting his people in here where he can, uh, and then. But everybody knew Matt Damon's face. Right. Nobody really recognized the other guys. I think. Oh, uh, of, of of I knew I knew I knew it was Luke. I, I was just gauging from the audience, yeah. and, and everybody was definitely whispering. Um, Who the fuck is that? <laughs> and, yeah, well, I mean, they were definitely getting. Who the fuck is that guy? Some good chuckles in with Matt Damon because <laughs> that was that was pretty funny. It was. I thought it would have been even funnier if they revealed that they actually were who they who if they were if that was Matt Damon of Earth, right, right. and then like Loki had to send him <laughs> back once Thor figured him out. Uh, I thought that would be pretty funny uh but uh anyway yeah so loki the, it was a very poor payoff to to that final scene of loki sitting on odin's throne and all we found out was what he did with asgard was treat it like his big toy like it was like his yeah. big dollhouse he just moved things into places and, yeah, and, just, and he wants all the recognition and praise right you know uh and that the, the, they really do get into the childish nature of thor and loki and their oh, and time. their rivalry with each other uh it's and sprinkled, how childish it's sprinkled it is. in throughout the whole movie really yeah. uh yeah i mean it's it, it's kind of like two brothers sitting in the back seat mm -hmm. elbowing each other slapping each other and yeah, get, getting at each other uh, we get to, you know, when we get to Sakaar, uh, we get Jeff Goldblum's Grandmaster. We forgot to mention in the, no, the non-spoiler section. No, I didn't but... want to mention it in the non-spoiler section because I feel like his role, while it was teased in the trailers, he might be one of the few genuine things that you didn't see from the trailers that you're really going to enjoy. So I really didn't want to talk about him too much. Uh, he's hilarious. I mean, absolutely hilarious. It is Jeff Goldblum. He's at, perfect. It is Jeff Goldblum doing impersonation of, of Jeff Goldblum. Bloom's times ten. Like that's literally what the right. what the role was. I feel like Taika Waititi said, "Everything that's you, I want. I want. I just want you to amplify it. Be as weird as you yeah. can. Go with your gut. Improvise yeah. a little bit. And if he, uh, it's either that or he was on ecstasy like the whole time because <laughs> <laughs> he was just uh, well, well. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy that just you know he doesn't he doesn't die. You know, he, he he's he pretty much owns everything. Yeah. Um, he has a hologram of, of himself just protruding throughout the, the city that he, or yeah. the world really, uh, that he that he runs and owns and, you know, just kind of lives on. And he just likes his enjoyment. He just kind of, he's his own. He's a, he's a Caligula. Like he, yeah. He has orgies on that ship. He, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's fond of blood sports. You know, he's, he just, he does, he's about flaunting his, fla flaunting his wealth and his power. And he is Caligula. Like that's what I was watching. I was like, oh, like he, yeah. Like you could totally picture him just in Absolutely. a sea of people, and everyone's just doing each other. Yeah, and then he's just like, and you can "Wow, see isn't Jeff this Goldblum great?" Doing that. <laughs> you can see Jeff Goldblum in real life doing that because, like, you know, I for one, you know, I've always been a lover, but I never really went to that level of like watching him or seeing him actually as Jeff Goldblum, like on interviews with you know reporters and stuff like that and i'm seeing him on youtube now with like talk shows and everything like that my god this is like one of the most feminine guys i've ever witnessed i mean he's the for being a straight guy or i mean i think he's i mean he's straight and he's married with kids now well if you believe older guy if you believe his line in uh but, in life aquatic he's only a quarter gay <laughs> i believe it i mean i'm telling you right now like i if, if i didn't know any better i thought he would be gay <laughs> 
But it was one of those things where like, I feel he's like... He's not gay, Jay. He's just a proto-metrosexual. He's very... <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I feel like he's like my spirit animal or something like that because I, I feel like I see so much of him inside of me. Like he just he just sees things from a different kind of perspective and he uses his hands and he's just yeah. very like... You know, he has like no filter. He's almost like a walking like commentary guy like he's just so curious you know he's like a little like you know sherlock holmes he just wants to like investigate and get to know you and like and his uh his you. number two in this the woman that in the orange armor that's always next to her right. she's also from hunt for the water people is so, she yeah. yeah i never saw her before i didn't know who she's she was a, she's another she's another actress that has okay. been in taika watiti films so yeah, good for her. getting more of it thor and hulk have their big battle and we kind of teased a little bit about their about their battle there it was kind of cheap man i I really still think that was cheap. Yeah. Thor, you know, oh, what we didn't talk about in in you know, in in the regular review which we can talk about now in spoilers is didn't you find it kind of odd that Thor was able just to kind of like go super saiyan when he was just like, you know, you have the power of Odin, son. You can do it. You know, the, the hammer it, was just to channel to your channel, power. I know. It's like, but it's always been in you and I was like, oh, man. I mean, what but, type of Mr. But, Miyagi but, bullshit is this? But at this? the same time it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, like after his father died, right? Because he's the god. He is the god of. He is the god of thunder. He did lose the hammer. It makes sense because he was probably really childish and he needed something to have and like, like hang on to. Like, oh, look at this. this right. Is my thing. Like, so, so his hammer, know, while, while an allegory because, for his dick, is also his blankie. Exactly. <laughs> exactly, Dave. That's my point. Thank you. And um, <laughs> he's Linus. He's Linus with the blankie. And but I'll and tell you what, he himself. looked. He looked really fucking badass with that lightning bolt flying out of him and his eyes lit up and shit but well for so long and then he's got one eye but yeah well yeah he does lose an eye in it uh which is something that they've been currently doing in the comics right now he does have one eye in the comics so i wonder if he's gonna have one eye when they get to avengers i'm just i'm just not sure i mean Ooh. i didn't check the promotional poster before reviewing this whether he has the eye patch on or not maybe he does i don't know i that's a good question but i mean they are mortal beings even though they are technically immortal gods um they they, they can die like any other if this film shows you anything as guardians I feel like drop you like should flies. have the eye patch right well if captain america can have a beard why can't he have the eye patch <laughs> good point yeah definitely <laughs> But yeah. So, so what do you think about um, Miss Valkyrie? Now, do you think her name has something to do with the movie that flopped over the summertime? No, I think her name has everything to do with the character she's based on in the comics, Valkyrie. Okay, I'll get into so that. So the in movie Easter eggs. had nothing to do with her no. name. No, from her. Bro. Okay. No. No, okay. there is a character in Thor in Thor curious. comics named Valkyrie. Yeah. So you know, Tessa Thompson. Valkyries plays. are from Norse right. mythology. They are right. the ones that ferry dead warriors to to Valhalla. Right. She she yeah, she played Valkyrie and she was that really sexy girl in uh, the movie Creed. I really had a nice little crush on her. But um it was um it was okay. I mean it was it was something that, you know, what what was she what was she needed to be? I think in yeah. a lot of ways, and it made sense for her character. They actually tried to give her a pretty good character arc, actually. Um, in Absolutely. the movie, no, they you gave know, her. It Thor's, was a great. It was a great opening with they her. Gave her off Thor's, the, uh, they gave her Thor's character arc from the first film. I mean, she didn't have to learn to be mortal or anything like that, but she had to learn to love her people again. She had to learn to mm, to do you know to do, do the right thing. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, yeah, she had to learn to put her 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 own. Her own selfishness aside, to to do what's better for for Asgard, as 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 Thor had to do as well. Uh, we get into Hulk, and Hulk has been on Sakaar since 2015. Uh, he's been their champion, and we don't really get a whole much more characterization than that. Although one of the reoccurring jokes is Thor constantly saying, "The sun's getting real low, buddy. The sun's getting real low." <laughs> he doesn't remember any other line. <laughs> He's always trying to calm him down, um, uh, and but I think their banter back and forth, those two in in that second act, is what really was the most powerful comedy in the entire film. Mm. It was it was yeah. really funny, and then obviously once they steal the Quinjet, um, and the CGI was fantastic. CGI which, was and right. there's there's a close up of Hulk sitting next to Thor, and Hulk's shoulder is hulking in in just just right off frame it's a little blurry but if you look there like you can see the hairs on his on his shoulder like just just there like that's great just the level of detail that they have was was really good they did a great job with that i did like the i did like the the idea of thor trying to start the quinjet and 
strongest Avenger? No. Uh, <laughs> you know, he can't figure it out and he goes <sighs> No, that's Mark Ruffalo. That's not that's not the Hulk. <laughs> point break. <laughs> and then he says point break. And point break was his code to unlock the Quinjet. <laughs> Which is there's a lot of nice callbacks yeah. to Avengers. Not many to Avengers uh Age of Ultron, but right. the original Avengers. So what what about Bruce Banner? Mark Ruffalo. Oh, he was great. I loved when he came too, and he's like, Wait, I, well, I'm on an alien planet, and I've been here for three years. Yeah, <laughs> like he's just completely weirded out. And then the well, best, it, the best it, thing it is, completely makes sense too. Some of Tony's clothes are what's yeah. on the Quinjet, but none of, but, but none of Bruce Banner's. <laughs> so he has to wear. There, this, there was only one this, line delivery that did not work for me. Other than that, I really liked him in the movie. Yeah. So no, it was I, I one like of Mark things. Ruffalo. He's I love Mark Ruffalo. He was Huge. brought in because he plays a great fish out of water. And yeah, that's what it is. No, I'm a I'm a big fan of his, but um, yeah, it, it was it was definitely it, it it worked and and you know it was uh, one of those things where you know at the very end when last time you see him when he jumps out of the helicopter and splat right, <laughs> yeah. on, right on the bridge didn't turn into the Hulk yet. <sighs> yeah, I I I I actually. I, I, that was a good. That was like probably the last real good comedy. I wasn't looking forward to a fight between the Hulk and that giant wolf, and they re, that, that really didn't pay off. They downplayed too, it. They downplayed that, it. That really didn't pay it off. It wasn't too, too well. much of a one. No, no. Uh, so let's let's wrap this up with uh, my Easter eggs. Uh, there's a there's a moment earlier on in the film where Thor is going through all the terrible things Loki has done to him. He mentions that Loki turned him into a frog, which is something that actually happened in the comic books in the 1980s. Thor was turned into a frog with a mini with a mini Thor's hammer and everything like that. On the the Grand Master's spire that sits just outside the 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 Coliseum, his arena, there are faces on it of former champions. One of the faces, and I got very excited to see this, was Better Ray Bill. Better Ray Bill uh, is the one that takes over for Thor in the comic books when Odin deemed him no longer worthy. Better Ray Bill is the one that is an alien uh, who is worthy to wield Thor's hammer Hmm. and takes it over and kind of essentially becomes Thor for some time in the comics. Uh, Eventually, Thor takes back his hammer, takes back his role as the God of Thunder, and... Better Ray Bill is given his own hammer, Stormbreaker. Uh, another face that is on the spire is Man Thing, which is Marvel's you know answer to Swamp Thing. He is also on there, and then one of the other faces I couldn't quite figure out, but it's kind of like a gladiator with sort of like a mohawk, a spiky mohawk on it. I thought that, that might be an homage to the Marvel Galactic character of Gladiator. So those are some interesting Easter eggs. Valkyrie which in the film she goes by Scrapper142, is uh, actually a comic book character. And she had her first appearance not in a Thor comic book. She actually fought the Hulk in Hulk number 142. So again, as this movie kind of stole, it kind of marries Thor Ragnarok a comic book storyline with Planet Hulk storyline mm. with some other storylines peppered that's in real, there. That's really good. So yeah. more things that, that, that Thor stole from the Hulk. He stole Valkyrie and he stole his storyline. And even mm. in uh, the comics, it's Hulk that leads the rebellion against the leaders of Sakaar. To he le- he basically becomes Spartacus and leads a slave revolt against the leaders of Sakar. In this, there really is no leader of the. They, they kind of joke at it that Korg is the leader of the resistance. <laughs> he's the leader of the because uh, he's the one that's always trying to to, to start rebellions. Uh, one of the things that we that we see is as Hela is going through the trophy Odin's trophy room, she sees an Infinity Gauntlet and goes fake and knocks it over yeah which is a big thing that marvel fans have been pointing out for a very long time they've been pointing out the fact that in thor one we saw a infinity gauntlet in there with all the infinity gems in it which meant that scene at the end of age of ultron when thanos puts on the glove and says fine i'll do it myself and there's no stones in the glove everyone wondered how he got that glove well in that scene he is wearing a left-handed glove. In uh, Thor, it was a right-handed glove. Therefore, it was a fake Infinity Gauntlet. So some of Odin's victories embellished they may be. Mm. I like how Hela knows exactly yeah. what's fake and what's not. Uh, Korg, obviously, we said, was voiced by Taika Waititi. Uh, he was basically one of 
uh, Hulk's lieutenants in the comic books in his in his takeover of Sakar. So that's yeah, the why audience had a lot of good laughs from him as well. He's good, uh, especially yeah. especially the end gag when he's like, "Oh no, he's dead." Yeah, I stepped on him hours ago. <laughs> and he's like, he starts talking. He's like, "Yeah, he's alive." <laughs> Um. Uh. The at the end, Asgard is destroyed. There is no more Asgard, and Thor has to learn the lesson that Asgard it belongs to its people. Not is it's not a planet. It's not a place. It's 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 in the hearts of him, in the hearts of the people. So where do they go from here? They they are a cast in an arc in space. Uh, obviously, we get the 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 mid credit scene of Thanos's ship hovering overhead of Thor's ship, uh, which will obviously lead us to where we get to when we see the Avengers Infinity War trailer. It is Thor floating through space debris and the Guardians finding him. He lands on the windshield and Rocket goes, ah, what's that? Get it off, get it off, get it off. So that that's obviously getting us to where how Thor's ship will get destroyed. But Asgard being destroyed in itself, Asgard will it may eventually have a permanent home. Well, hopefully it doesn't kill all of his people. It might. Who knows? <sighs> That'd be pretty bad. Uh, but, it, it, but what I was getting at is that Asgard, Ragnarok does happen in the comics. Asgard does get destroyed. But Asgard finds a new home. It hovers over top of Bronxton, Oklahoma. And the Asgard actually finds its permanent home in Midgard, hovering about 100 feet off the ground hmm. in the middle of Oklahoma. And I'm thinking that... I was thinking Norway. <laughs> <laughs> that they may never do a... They may never do another another Thor film, but they might pay homage to that in some way in some film They don't the need line. to make another Thor, Thor film after yeah. this one. It's just... This no. Is, this is too much. So, I mean, that's really all I have for, for Easter eggs and stuff. I just thought some of those things were pretty interesting. Yeah, they, they were. Um, and I especially like the, 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 the Thanos line. One of the things Kevin Foggy said was that Better Ray Bill was supposed to have a cameo in the film. He was supposed to have a very brief cameo. However, he is such a fan favorite and people have been calling for him for so long that Kevin Feige felt that his cameo would have done a disservice to the character. So therefore, he decided to save him for a later film. Mm. So that means we may get better Ray Bill in more than just statue appearance. Interesting. So that's going to do it for Super Movie Brothers tonight. I hope you enjoyed our review of Thor Ragnarok. If you didn't agree with our scores, reach out to us on Twitter at Super Movie Pod. Let us know what you thought of Thor Ragnarok. Let us know how you think we should have scored it. If there's any Easter eggs or spoilers that you thought that we should have talked about, please also reach out to us and let us know those. Thanks a lot for listening. Have a great night. Cheers. Cheers, guys.